So number one is get a guitar teacher. Having a teacher and somebody in your corner to tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and to help coach and train you through some of the most difficult concepts and techniques uh, is, is a huge advantage, okay? Now, of course, it's gonna cost you a little bit of money, but the payoff, if you find the right teacher, will be huge. Now, if you live in the Ottawa area, you can contact uh, myself or my company, Go Guitar Lessons. We do have professional teachers that will go to your door. If not, there are a lot, a lot of other fantastic teachers here in the Ottawa area or whatever city you're living in. You can just go to your local music store or check out your local listings like Craigslist or Kijiji. Okay, so find a teacher, very important. Number two is learn a brand new style. Um, it doesn't matter what style you're playing now. If you're a blues player, maybe start learning country. Uh, country will lend a lot to blues and blues will lend a lot to country or even learn rock, uh, a rock style. Another thing that you can do is that you can go on the extreme end. So if you're a blues player, learn something classical. Especially if you're, you're in a rut and you're, you're finding yourself getting bored of what you're learning and what you're playing, learning a, a style that is completely, uh, completely different from what you're doing already uh, can really, really reinvigorate uh, the excitement in playing guitar, okay? So learn a brand new style, uh, whether it's something closely related to the style you're playing now, which will help a lot, or if it's something that's completely um, uh, different, okay? Okay, number three isn't very sexy, uh, it's schedule your practices. So this is a big one. Um, if you have a goal to get better, but you're only playing when you feel like it, and you're only playing when you have time, chances are you're not gonna be very consistent and you're not gonna be very focused. So what you should do is you should actually schedule time into play. Just like you do with your other activities or other commitments um, during your week, make sure that you schedule it in. When you schedule it in, even if you don't feel like doing it, make sure you do it. Uh, Mondays at 5.15, if you, if you find that you have a spot available there, schedule it in and make sure that you consistently do it Mondays at 5.15. Uh, of course, one day a week is not gonna be enough. I recommend three minimum. Uh, four is probably best and then more is better. Okay. So if you're scheduling in uh, your practices and you're getting more focused, it's probably best to journal it, okay? So a journal is just a, a scrap notebook um, with the date on top. The way I organize my journals with, with my students, uh, we have the date on top. We always start with the boring stuff first. So any scales or exercises that, we are, are, um, that we're practicing or learning, we make sure that we go through those first. We list the number of times we're, we're playing it or playing it. If we're playing it to a metronome, we of course write down the BPMs that we practice it at. And then further on down the list, we have the songs that we're doing. Um, and if we're, if we're using a, a slowdown app or something like AnyTune, we uh, of course list the percentage speed that we practice it at or the BPMs that we practice it at. So basically anything that you do, if you're doing improvisation techniques, uh, whatever you're learning, make sure you jot down what you accomplished so that you can actually look back to a previous week or even previous months or previous years and see what you did and sometimes go back and refresh it. And it's gonna help keep you uh, very organized, which will help uh, actually you improve a lot, okay? There is a lot of information on the net. Uh, YouTube, even Facebook has a lot of videos now. Uh, I believe you can find guitar lessons on, on um, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram has stuff, uh, probably even Pinterest. Of course, the big ones would be YouTube and then the actual internet itself. Uh, you could find online courses. Uh, you could find online teachers where you can do Skype lessons. Sometimes you could even do a Skype lesson with a famous, a famous guitar player. There's a lot of choices. There's a lot of stuff on theory on the internet. The only downfall about using the internet is how do you sift through um, all the stuff that's good and all the stuff that's bad. The best app by far, hands down, is an app called AnyTune Pro. Uh, unfortunately, it's only available for Apple products. So if you don't have an Apple product, there are other apps that you can use that uh, do the job as well. 
but any tune by far is the best, okay? I'll leave um, a link down in the, the description if you want to uh, purchase that or check it out. There, there's a free version uh, of it as well. Now, the slowdowner apps, why I like them a lot is that you can slow down music. You can actually figure out um, the phrasing a lot better. You can see how accurate you are uh, and you can train. So if you're playing, if you're training to play a song like Eruption, there's no way that you're going to be able to play it with the music um, right away. There's no way you can train to that. So what what you do is you do it in a couple of steps. You learn a part of the song, a chunk of it, play it, play it, play it enough, memorize it, get it up to a certain speed, and then start the app at a very low speed of 35% or 40%, and then make sure you're matching Van Halen, uh, Eddie Van Halen on his notes, and then slowly increase it. Okay. And of course, it's not just for eruption, but I was just thinking of a very, very fast song um, that would be difficult to match to the music without uh, training. By going up in 5% increments, uh, you could eventually uh, make it up to 100%, and if you're consistent, you will. So tip number seven is use books. So this is a big one, especially in our digital age, um, where, where we thought that books were going to be uh, extinct. Uh, they're not. I mean, uh, if you go into a bookstore, you go into a music store, they always have lots of books. And I love books because the quality of information you get is very high. Now, a book has to go through um, a big process in order to, to get uh, published, produced, and then thrown on a shelf. There's a lot of money and resources and time that get you know put behind a book rather than a YouTube video um, you know, that somebody made or even a website. So chances are, if all of that money and resources are, are being put behind it, there's some good quality information in there. And I always find that to be the case. I have a, a fairly big library that is constantly growing of books. I use it for myself, I use it for teaching. So I highly, highly recommend books, okay? This is something a lot of uh, self-taught players do not do. Uh, and it, it is very, very overlooked. Now, if you are a beginner, you might not want to use a metronome right away because you're just getting a handle on uh, on how to play certain notes. But if you're an intermediate player, I highly recommend playing to a metronome. You can practice your scales to it. Uh, but playing songs to a metronome um, is helpful to understanding rhythms and timings, and it's gonna tighten up your playing. You probably don't realize um, that your timing is off, a metronome will correct it and once you actually start playing with other players or if you already are by playing to a metronome you guys can all get into sync and get a lot tighter together so my last one is a big one and it's finally learn theory okay so if you're an intermediate player and you've been playing for a while and you've never learned any theory whatsoever now is the time to do it okay I know it can be scary. I know you can look at certain concepts and have no idea what is happening, uh, but you have to take it piece by piece and s stick with it. I can't even tell you the amount of times that theory has saved me uh, in songwriting situations, in jam situations, when I'm improvising guitar solos, uh, when I'm teaching students. I mean, it, there's, there's nothing bad about learning theory. So take the time to finally learn theory. There's a lot of websites that, that you can do. Again, a guitar teacher will really help you learn theory. Uh, books can help you learn theory. So the key for this one is just make it a goal to actually learn theory.